Good Monday morning. I'm Otis Corbett. I'm coming to you on Facebook this morning so that we can all start off this week the right way with scripture and prayer. Our passage for today is Malachi chapter 3. This passage reads, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant, unto the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow, the follow, fatherless, and, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be not room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. But ye say, what have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now, Ye call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that feared the Lord spake often to one another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a voice of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So, as I am recording this devotional, this is the first week of December of 20. 23. And of course, in this month of December, we all look forward to Christmas. We're all looking forward to the uh, time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus on this earth. And what we see very often in our world today is that people lose sight of what this whole holiday is about. And I want to share a, a story about a widow that really illustrates this problem. Now, bear with me because it is a fairly long story, but in the end, you'll see where I'm going uh, with this tale. You see, this widow was very lonely, so her doctor recommended she get a pet, and she went to the pet store, and the owner recommended that she get a parrot because a parrot will talk to you, he said, and that'll make you feel less lonely. So with the assurance that the bird would talk with her, the woman took the cage and the bird and went home. And after a week, she came back and said she wanted to return the bird because it wouldn't talk to her. So the man said, did you buy a ladder for the cage? And she said, no. Well, 
These parrots like to talk after they exercise. So buy him a ladder, he'll walk up and down the ladder, and, and then he'll want to talk. So she bought the ladder and took him back home. Another week, she came back and she told the man that she wanted to return the bird because it still wouldn't talk to her. The man said, did you buy a swing for the cage? And she told him no. He said, well, these parrots like to talk after they exercise, but you aren't giving him enough exercise. So buy him a swing and he'll walk up and down the ladder, jump on the swing, have a swing, and then he'll want to talk. So she bought the swing and took the bird back home. Again, this happened a third time. And uh, the man said, did you buy a mirror for the cage? And she said, no. He said, well, these parrots like to talk after they look at themselves. So buy him a mirror. Then he'll walk up and down the ladder. He'll swing on the swing. He'll look at the mirror and then he'll want to talk to you. So she bought the mirror and took the bird back home. Well, the woman came back a fourth week and she said, I want to get my money back because the parrot died. And the man said, that's strange. I've, I've never had that happen before. Did he say anything before he died? She said, yes. He said one sentence. He said, don't they have any food at that pet store? You see, <laughs> Christmas season has arrived and we are in danger of losing sight of the reason for the season. Uh, it's like this woman who lost sight of how to take care of her parrot. And we lose sight of what the reason for the Christmas season is. It's predicted this year that shoppers are planning to spend an average of $1,652 this holiday season. 95% of the customer uh, of customers plan to shop for this holiday season. And many families this year will spend 156% of their monthly income during the Christmas holiday in 2023. So we've gotten to be very commercial in our approach to Easter. So like the woman who forgot to buy food for her parrot, we forget what the Christmas season is all about. You see, we're having uh, ourselves in the same danger that Israel was. Israel had a real problem remembering. They were great at forgetting, but they were uh, problematic when it comes to remembering all that God did for them. And so as we look forward to Christmas Day 2023, let's remind ourselves the reason for the season, what Christmas is all about. First of all, it's a season of anticipation. Verses 1 through 7 tell us that, that uh, it's a time when we remember that God himself came to us. You know, it's interesting. Persons of power don't go to others. Uh, you, generally speaking, go see your boss. Now, if he comes to see you, you are in trouble. <laughs> but generally speaking, when your boss wants to see you, you go see your boss. You go see the king. You go see the president. You go see the governor. You go see the principal of the school. And they wait for others to come see them. When, when a person comes to see you, you're either in trouble or it's a great honor. Like, the president going to a war zone on Thanksgiving and serving Thanksgiving dinner to the people there in the war zone. Um, that's when you know you're being honored, when a person of greatness comes to you. And in Christmas time, what we see is God coming to us in a very surprising way. Uh, most people of power will bring an entourage and they'll have all kinds of preparations made for them to come and they'll be, uh, be able to come see you, but it will not be an inconvenience to themselves. They'll find a way to make it comfortable for themselves. But Jesus did not come in power and, and in might. And in fact, he came in the form of a little baby. Philippians 2, 5 through 11 tells us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
as he comes to our level, he lives with us in humility, or he has lived with us in humility, but he still did not relinquish his power. Think of a major uh, uh, of an NFL football player coming to your house on Thanksgiving Day or Christmas Day and playing touch football. Do they relinquish their power? No. They, they may dial it back, but they're still going to overpower everyone on the field. Think of someone like the, uh, the great tenor Pavarotti coming to your church and singing in your church choir, how he would overwhelm everything. At Christmas, our God came to us in power and greatness and in humility, but he came with a particular purpose in mind. You see, humanity was and is sinful. He, he came to purify us and to make us suitable to bless God. He came to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. Now, he also came to reject, uh, to, to condemn those who reject him. In fact, he doesn't condemn them, but he, the scriptures say in John 3, 16 and 17, that, um, that he came to, to redeem the world, to forgive the world of their sin, uh, for everyone who believes on him, but those who don't believe on him has been condemned already. Jesus came to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves and came to put all things right. And we anticipate him coming. We look forward to it. And we look forward to remembering all that he's done for us right now. And then we look forward to what he's going to do in the years to come. When I was a young pastor, I once had to preach on, on Christmas Day, and I didn't have a sermon for that. It was unexpected. I had a last-minute call, but I did have a sermon on the second coming of Jesus. And what I did was I called it the flip side of Bethlehem, and I preached a sermon on the second coming of Jesus. And I got away with it because the people there were so kind. But truth be told, we are now in a season of anticipation for a Christmas holiday in remembrance, but we also are looking forward for Jesus coming back for us, his people. Christmas is a time of, of anticipation. It's also a time of giving. We need to remember that God invested in us. He has created this world for us. He's given us the pleasures of this world for us. Thanksgiving meals, Christmas parties, Christmas meals, uh, vanilla ice cream, wonderful meal, a wonderful food. But the most thing he did for us was to give his son for us. The scriptures tell us that uh, God demonstrated his own love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so he sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins, even when we were sinful. Let's consider what the Word of God says from Isaiah chapter 53. This talks about Jesus. Isaiah 53, beginning in verse 3, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know, because of our sin, it costs God tremendously to save us. It costs Jesus tremendously to save us. But he invested in us. He poured his life into us. He poured his riches into us. And he poured his forgiveness into us. But God also, according to Malachi chapter 3, he expects a return because it's an investment. He expects us to give us uh, to give our total allegiance to him, our total devotion and allegiance. Bryant Wright, when he was pastor of Johnson Ferry Baptist Church in Marietta, Georgia, said the Christian's highest task is not to um, win souls, but to love God with all our heart. 
He expects us to get on board with this work, and he expects us to be laborers together with God. And that means we have to go, and it means we have to give. There are many practical reasons to give, but it's also a spiritual imperative to give. God says this, he says, when we don't give, we're robbing him of his tithes and offerings. God reinvests back into us. Listen to what Malachi 3, 10 through 12 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground and neither shall your vine cast her fruit for the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. So let me tell you the truth. God is a debtor to no person. Uh, he has invested in us, and when we return a portion of that investment, he takes it and multiplies it. And even greater than that, he does get his honor and his glory out of that process, but also what he does is he takes that and puts it back to us and gives us what Jesus calls an abundant life. John 10.10 10 is one of my favorite passages of Scripture, and it tells us a couple of things about God's reinvestment with us. First of all, he protects us from those who want to spoil our investment and ruin our investment. You know, uh, we've had a lot of, of, of Ponzi schemes and, and other uh, false investments and, 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 and uh, ways of swindling investors in the news for, for many years. And, and, and God protects us from that. He said, Jesus said, that the thief comes not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. That's one of my favorite passages of scripture. And it promises us God is gonna keep us from being spoiled when we invest in him. Our investments in him will not go to waste. And he says he's gonna give us an abundant life. For some of us, that abundant life will be realized totally or to a great extent in the here and now. But for all of us, it will be realized in the hereafter when we go to be with our Lord. So this season, this season of Christmas is a season of anticipation, anticipating what Christ is gonna do for us in the future because of what he did for us in the past. And as we remember what he did for us in his earthly ministry. And then it's also a season of giving of giving and investing in God who invested in us and then letting God take our investment and use it for his glory and for our ultimate blessing. And then finally, it's a season to commit to God. Not everybody in Israel would accept God's covenants and God's arrangements that he wanted to make with him. In fact, most people did not. In fact, what most people in Israel did was forget who God was, and that they were his people. They lost their purpose. They lost their mission. They lost their love for God. They lost their fear for God. They, they destroyed their nations, the northern nations, the uh, kingdom of Israel, and the southern kingdom of Judah were both destroyed because of their sin and their disdain for God. They were rebellious and proud. They turned things upside down. The things that God said was evil, they called good, and the things that God called good they called evil. Some, however, would ask the vital question. Verse 7 says this of chapter 3, even from the days of your fathers you are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? This is the vital question. Some people probably ask this arrogantly. Some ask it maybe humbly. But some, like the Philippian jailer, asked in fear and trembling, realizing exactly who the Lord their God was. The jailer, the Philippian jailer who had put uh, uh, Paul and Silas in, in jail. And uh, uh, he asked them the question, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? 
And the answer was direct, simple, and understandable. Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. We all need to ask this same question. This is a time uh, when we are celebrating the coming of the Christ child who grew up to be a, the perfect sacrifice for our sins, die on the cross and rise again on the third day. We need to commit our lives to him and allow him to uh, bless us and possess us. When we ask the right questions and we give the right answer, we're blessed. God will bless us. He will make us like jewels, according to Malachi. He will treat us as his children. He will give us discernment in this life, and we will have an abundant life and a wonderful life after this because of what Jesus did for us and our commitment to him. So the writer of Malachi would ask this question during this Christmas season. Are we robbing God? Are we robbing God by not giving him our soul? Are we robbing God by not giving him our total love? Are we robbing God by not joining him in his work? Are we robbing God by not supporting his ministries? If we are, here's the good news. We can repent and change our mind and change our decision and we can serve our Lord and we can be blessed today. So the reason for the season is to celebrate what Jesus did for us and to, to anticipate what he'll do for us, to give, to support him in his work by giving him our lives, giving him our effort, giving him our will, giving him all of our lives. And it's a time we can commit ourselves to him. If you've never, ever given Jesus your heart, and committed your life to the sacrifice that Jesus made for you and accepting that as your, um, as your way of forgiveness, this is a great season to do that in. Give our lives to Jesus and let us remember that this is the reason for the season. Now, let's turn to a time of prayer. Uh, let's begin with a few requests from our local ministry. Uh, we are praying for a church every week. Uh, and so this week we're praying for West Highland Baptist Church and their pastor, Larry Stewart. We continue to pray for uh, the, the numbers of churches without pastors, particularly by vocational churches. We're praying for our Christian service centers, the, the Compassion Ministry, because this is a time of year when people want to celebrate, they want to come together, but some people have limited resources. Our Christian service centers will help them stretch those resources this year with our food distribution. And so pray that as we do that, that people would not only be touched with the generosity of the people of Covenant County, but also with the love of God in a special way. Pray for uh, our longtime staff members, Brian, uh, Byron Lambert and Leroy Cole, as they are retiring at the end of December, and pray that they will adjust well to their new life of being retired. They're going to continue to serve God, uh, teaching Sunday school, preaching, doing things of that nature, but they're going to have a different lifestyle in the days to come, and I pray that they'll adjust to that and uh, enjoy it and be blessed by it. Uh, pray for our first prayer rally of 2024, which is held at Westview Baptist Church on January 30th. We'll be having prayer rallies all across our, our county in 2024, and the first one is on January 30th. Pastor Gary Miller and I spent some time um, last, uh, last week just preparing uh, the plans for this prayer rally. I'm excited about it, and I pray that we'll have many people come and pray about, uh, about, the, about the ministry of our service for God together. And uh, on a broader scale, uh, let's continue to pray for peace in Ukraine and the peace of Jerusalem. Pray that our churches and church members would reinvest themselves in outreach and missions in the post-COVID era. I did a study in our association of churches in 2014, and I did it again in 2023. The highest thing that was um, uh, was listed as a priority, uh, or one of the very highest in 2014, was uh, outreach and, men and evangelism. And that was actually quite low in 2023. 
So we need to reinvest ourselves in that. Pray about the Christmas season, that we would make Jesus the reason for the season. And pray for the special worship services that are going to be held all over the world and all over our nation and all over Alabama and all over our county here. And help the people who will come to that to hear the gospel. And they'll truly understand the reason for the season is that Jesus came to redeem us from ourselves and from our sin. Pray for many souls to be one to the Lord this Christmas season. Now, may God give you a good week and may you feel his blessings every day. Let me pray for us. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord to make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. Hope you have a great Monday morning and a wonderful week to come. And I hope to see you again here next week.